What up? Shout out to Growing Pains Podcast. You already know we about to kill it on the interview. Now we saw stuff. Shout out to my boys. This ain't no joke. Don't play with us now. Let's tap in. Yo, what's up, y'all? It's your boy Dantez Akram, aka The Real Tez. Um, I'm on the number one podcast for young entrepreneurs growing pains. Make sure y'all hit that subscribe button. I've done over seven figures, close to eight figures with multiple businesses, and uh, I just want to give y'all as much game as possible. But this is the podcast that you need to tap in with in order to actually unlock the real potential within you. So make sure y'all tap in, hit that subscribe button. Let's get it. What's up? We're back with another episode. It's your girl, Yanni, and we got... Hey, y'all. It's Jada. What's good? It's Travion. And you know, it's your boy CEO, Sean. We are here for another episode. This is about to be an amazing episode. Yeah. I'm personally yeah. excited. We got my boy, Dante's in the building. Let's yeah. give him some love. Yeah. 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 What's up, what's up? Just to give y'all a little introduction, you know what I'm saying? He's a seven figure entrepreneur, 24 years old. He's a thought leader. He is like, Man, he is just man. You a man, right? Uh, you a man. It, man. I just want to say, most people out here in these streets and they not doing what they supposed to do. You really carrying a legacy right now. Yeah. I appreciate you, it, bro. you about to give something to your daughter, right? Talk to us about that a little bit. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, more importantly, I'm a father over everything else. You know, I mean, being an entrepreneur and everything like that is cool. But you know, when you got somebody you live for and um, you know you got to put food on their plate, you know, you it's it's a lot bigger than just me. So uh, yeah, we we grinding, hustling. You know, what I'm saying she own fifty percent of my clothing brand, One Love. She's five years old. Okay. Um, five figure net worth at a, as a five year old, so <laughs> six figures by the end of this year, and we just grinding, hustling, man. I love that. Nobody talking like that. So it's about to be a good episode. Let's get <laughs> started. Sweet. So again, like any questions that you got for him, real quick? Yeah, for sure. Um, I got a question. So with your daughter, what was the pivotal point of okay, I have to build a legacy for her? What was your thought when you first had a child? Did you actually were you ready? Do you feel as though like you know? Maybe there's a possibility to abort or different things like that. Like, what was your thought process and how did you truly feel? Yeah, so, like, I had a kid at 18. So, for me, it was like, um, if I'm being honest, like, uh, the the abort didn't even come to mind Mm because I wasn't, I I was just kind of distraught. You know, it wasn't something that I wanted. And I also believe that, um, you know, certain things happen for certain reasons right and i have no control over certain things obviously i could have controlled you know who i laid in bed with but mm-hmm. nonetheless i took full accountability for it i think when i started focusing on building a legacy was soon as she was born when mm-hmm. i looked at her and i noticed like wow i compared a picture of me when i was a baby to her when she was a baby and i'm like this is my twin and then she grew up <laughs> that's really my twin so yeah. um you know outside of her just like looking like me you know she has my last name and yeah. um you know i grew up on you know family and your last name is everything so mm-hmm. i stand on those things you know my last name is supposed to be on billboards it's supposed to be yeah. on apartment buildings it's supposed to be owning stuff and we're supposed to be recognized so i have to you know walk this earth with the utmost respect for myself and for my last name so mm-hmm. yeah. you know now it's like you know we gotta acquire assets because this right. last yeah. name we gotta have like man before I pass, bro, we got to have buildings on buildings on buildings. Yeah. Our last name got to be <laughs> everywhere. Like, why are we seeing Hilton? Why can't y'all see Akram Apartments? Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Akram Hotels. You know I what I'm like saying? That. So, okay, you talking yeah. spicy. You know what I'm saying? You talking spicy. But I got to mellow it a little bit because, again, like, again, like, that's the dream, right? Mm-hmm. But, again, I, we got to talk about because, again, everybody, if they don't know who you are, we want to talk about that a little bit. So, again, when you had your child, you're thinking, all right, bet, I got to build a legacy for her, right? Yeah. But you're still again you were 18 mm-hmm. like you weren't where you wanted to be like were you where you wanted to be absolutely not and mm-hmm. you were still like you were not where you want to be but you said hey i gotta think at this i gotta think at a higher frequency to give to her mm-hmm. but since you were in that you know basically low place compared to where you are now what did you have to do what was the first thing you did for her like what was the first actions that you took i mean if really i think in order to be a great dad you got to also be mindful of who you are as a person mm-hmm. so like i had to be I had to change everything about myself, things that I didn't like. I had to sit my, sit with myself for a week and tell myself, like, look, I don't like this, 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 and this. Mm-hmm. So how do you change these things? You're not going to be able to change it overnight, mm-hmm. but can I at least work on it progressively, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, I identify certain things about my, my personality and I uh, identify certain things about what I was doing in my day-to-day life that I didn't like. Yeah. So I said, you know what? Let me focus on changing these first so I can be a better father. That's so good. when yeah. I focused on that and my reason was to be a better dad, there was yeah. now something that was bigger than just just doing it just to do it. 
Mm-hmm. And, you know, being 18 and you got a kid, you know, I was working at, uh, you know, I worked at Amercami and Fitch for a period of time when I was playing basketball in high school. Mm-hmm. Um, when I got out of high school, all of my friends went off to college. I couldn't afford to go to college. Yeah. Um, there was, it's crazy because I was looking to go into Cleveland State. And, um, you know, I ended up telling the counselor, like, look, I, I do have a kid on the way before I like sign any papers. I'm like at the end yeah. of the whole process. I didn't already walked and did the tour and everything. And she was like, well, do you really feel like adding school on top of this is going to allow you to be a, a, the best dad you can be? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, man. So I told her, I was like, nah, I don't think college is for me. So Damn. I said no. And not real life hit me. You know what I mean? Yeah, like I got yeah. kicked out of my mom's house and a whole bunch of other stuff started happening. Oh, really? I started losing friends to gun violence. So it was like. I'm like, I got to make better decisions. Mm-hmm. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna pick up a job where I can just get paid as much as possible. So I got a factory job. I was working 50 hours a week. Um, I was picking up on weekends, and then I got kicked out. So you know, I was sleeping on the floor for a period of time, and then um, you know, I started realizing like I want to work my way up through the work system. I'm a lot smarter than the average person. Mm-hmm. So you know, I was like, you know what? I, I can see how a factory works. I can see how they have assembly lines and just different components of that one business. And I was like, okay, well now I understand the structure of this. Let me go learn something else. So I took it upon myself to go learn sales so mm-hmm. i went to best buy and sam's club and i was one of those sales guys selling you know direct tv and cable yeah. <laughs> and energy and you know i was talking to people who were selling sheets in there yeah. but it was a commission and hourly job so it was based off my work ethic so i had yeah. to come in and i had to perform and it allowed me to actually learn how to take nose to the face and allowed me yeah. to delay certain things because i couldn't get it and um, over a period of time, I just learned, you know, after working there and went on to sales, I started learning about credit. I started learning about banks. I started learning about the IRS. I started learning about how the America actually worked and how it's just a big business. And yeah. at this time, I'm like 21 mm-hmm. and my daughter's like just starting to walk and stuff. So I'm like, I'm starting to figure out things that most people at 28 couldn't figure out yet. Yeah. Yeah. So that's when I knew I'm like, oh, OK, so this is something that's that's real. So mm-hmm. now I know I'm, I know I'm a little smart. Now I got a little edge. Now I just got to keep going. So I start picking up books, start reading more. And um, I do feel like, you know, a lot of times we, we sometimes feel like, you know, in high school, we read the wrong books. So I don't like reading. Yeah. It's not that. It's just that that's, you were fed the wrong true. books. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wanted to ask you a question. I have two, but I'm going to ask, ask one. How do you feel about deadbeat fathers? How do I feel? Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I personally don't respect men who don't do anything for their kids. Mm-hmm. You know, your relationship with the mother um, of your child is 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 what it is. You know, I don't mm-hmm. have the best relationship with mom, but I'm still there every day. You know what I mean? Yeah. I live in a completely different state, but you know what I mean? I still make sure I take care of my duties as a father. Mm-hmm. So I don't I don't really have respect for men who don't take care of their kids because it's like you, it, you gotta, it's a 50-50 thing. You know, yeah. I know, you know, we always talk about 100-100, but in reality, you know, it's 50-50. You went in, you decided to lay down with this person, they got pregnant, they decided to have the kid because it's their body. Yeah. yeah, You have to come in and be that person right. that's like, you know what, this kid needs guidance. So I don't yeah. respect men who don't do nothing for their kids. Regardless yeah. of if you wanted the kid or not, it's like you still have to do it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, no, that it's not an option. True. That actually just made me think, did you see the story on Instagram about there's a guy, a black guy, who was going around talking about he has a whole bunch of kids and he's not in none of their lives because... Uh, he said, I told all of them I don't want children. Mm. So if they want to keep it, that's on them. Excuse so me? he said, that's he wow. said Yeah, he said, I don't want them. So I'm not about to be in their lives. Like, that's crazy to me. Yeah. I mean, I, I've seen it. I think I've seen that on the Shea Room. I yeah, think it was like uh-huh. super viral. <laughs> and, you know, this is my opinion too. You know, I just don't understand like how you keep laying with women and not protecting yourself. And then mm. you just thinking like, oh, I'm not responsible for I'm anything. About it. No, you know, it's, it's, it's a sacrifice, bro. You know, you decide sure. to lay down in bed and you don't put the condom on. You got to understand that it's a possibility this might happen. Yeah. No, and I've also realized, you know, if a woman decides to keep it, you know, you can be pissed off as long as much as you want, mm-hmm. you know, but it's also like that kid didn't ask to be here. Really? It didn't ask for you exactly. to do that. So it's like to 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 have these children grow up in broken households. It's mm-hmm. like it's it's un, very unfortunate. It's very common now too. Yeah. And I've realized too, a lot of young people they okay with just being baby moms yeah, and baby yeah. dads. For sure. I ain't, I don't want that. You know what I'm saying? Like my I, I grew up with my grandparents, so you know you know while my mom was working as a nurse, my grandparents were married 61 years and they had all eight mm. kids together. Yeah. They got married at 20. So I'm like, dang, like, why can't I have that? You know what I'm saying? But now that's the aspiration. That's what I'm looking for. So I'm not about to be just laying down with any girl now. It's just like, nah, I'm really ready to build. So intentional. So you said something about guidance um, with when having a child laying down and deciding to have a child. And so or if it just comes up. So what on a day to day basis are you instilling into your daughter? What are you letting her know? Like, 
because the relationship that a person, a woman has with their father or with their mom, it determines how they grow up and, you know, who they allow to accept in their lives and what they tolerate and different things like that. Right. So what are you instilling your daughter, letting her know as far as business wise and as far as personal of just having self-respect for herself and all of that? absolutely i mean she's five too but mm -hmm. i started very early you know yeah. even with money we know we we started her off at like three mm -hmm. where we got her a piggy bank and every time she did good in school every time she started doing good i gave her money and i said what do we do with our money and she said we save it yeah. and i said then what do we do with it she says invest it and this is what she knows mm -hmm. and there's parts to this this wording that i'm giving her that she gets at different points in her life mm -hmm. but she understands the core concept of saving and investing right that's and amazing. that's five years old but she also understands the fact that she should love herself and that i mm -hmm. love her no matter what and no matter what anyone says if our, our friends in school are being mean mm -hmm. or if something is happening you're a great person you're you're amazing you're smart you're you're courageous you're a leader and yeah. i tell her these things every time i see her and you know for me it's like it's important to say those things to children because they have to grow up with confidence yeah. Yeah. and right now a lot of kids are being bullied easily mm -hmm. so it's like I don't want her to be one of those people, but also I do realize that she needs to grow up a little bit tougher. So, yeah. you know, the things that I'm doing with her is like teaching her how to fight, teaching yeah. her how, yeah. how to stick up for herself, but also teaching her how to be smarter when she's picking and choosing her fights. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, yeah. she's five, you know, obviously I got some time. <laughs> sure. um, yeah. yeah. So, but I, I take that very seriously. Like that's, I take yeah. that more serious than making money, to be honest with you. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, I wanted to know. What type of father figure presence did you see growing up and how does that affect how you decided to be a father? Mm. Uh, that's a great question. Um, so like me and my dad, we, we didn't have the best relationship. Um, but my grandfather, like I said, I, I grew up a lot with my grandparents. Yeah. My mom worked a lot. My dad wasn't really around too much. Um, you know, I was there some weekends out of the month. And um, for me personally, you know, I realized that my grandfather raised eight kids but yeah. he was raising me as if i was his own and even my sisters so now it's like you really got 11 kids but you're raising us all as if we're your own kid yeah. mm -hmm. and you know he would take me to work with him he'd get his hands dirty he'd go and, and, and be in construction and tell me like look you have to be mm -hmm. doing these things and then as i started getting older before he passed he started telling me like look you can't hang around certain people mm -hmm. you know you're gifted and and by telling somebody that you know naturally even if you don't feel gifted if somebody tells you you're gifted the confidence immediately exactly. raises right so I, i've always had had a high level of confidence outside of like certain things when I was younger. Mm -hmm. um, but I had my grandfather and, you know, he, he instilled a lot of great things in me. And yeah. one of them was respect for women. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I don't let no woman open the door for herself. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I don't do that stuff. I don't, yeah. I don't argue with women. I don't call her. I don't call no woman out their name, period. That's it. just, I don't do that. So, yeah. So since you did have your grandfather in your life, being that father figure, mm -hmm. Did it still end up affecting you later in life that your father wasn't really present or that y'all didn't have a relationship? Like, as you got older, did you realize that kind of affected you emotionally? Yeah, I mean, me and my dad, we had got into it a couple times, a lot of times. And, um, you know, I kind of, I didn't like, you know, seeing my mom upset, crying and certain things and, you know, financially not having certain stuff. And um, it made me extremely frustrated. But like I always tell people I got that dog in me. So like when I see stuff like that, you see your mom crying. It's like, it's a different level of mm. like, I really Protection. have to make it. Yeah. You yeah. know, I really got to go do something great. Cause like, I can't have her doing these things. Yeah. Uh, and like being like that, you know what I'm saying? So like, for me, it was like, we had a bad relationship, but then I realized like my mom forgave him. Yeah. So if she yeah. forgave him. She wanted me to forgive him. I'm like, man, a young, I'm like 19, 18. I'm like, I don't want to forgive him. Mm -hmm. I, I don't care about him. Yeah. Didn't I? And then I started realizing it's like, but at the end of the day, that's just who he was in that moment. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I can't blame him for being how he was in that moment. I just got to forgive him and, and yeah. continue moving forward. Because like traumas, you know what I mean? You you have these emotional traumas going on. And it's like, if you don't learn how to get over it, yeah. it's going to be forever there. So, so forever is he trying to be in your life now? That Now that you've become successful, how is he trying to show up in your life or is he now that he sees yeah. that you're doing great things like what is that relationship like now um i mean the relationship is getting a lot better you know we're, we're still mending it um it's not something that happens overnight so i understood that you know years ago but i embraced it i embrace him wanting to be there and mm -hmm. i think too it's really cool to see him want to be a grandfather and okay, to want to do better good. for himself and and you know I, I i like that stuff you know he's he's trying to get himself on the right track and, and trying to do the right things um you know there's still certain things i haven't certain like i haven't forgiven him for yet but yeah. it takes time you know I don't, time. forgiveness I is hard it yeah. is like, <laughs> extremely for hard real. Yeah. sometimes you can even think that you forgave someone and then 
you may feel something in your heart, like they could do something or something Pull could get string. triggered. Yeah. yeah, and it's like, oh yeah, it's yeah, still yeah. there. Like I Absolutely. really didn't forget yeah. that person. So yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that can be really hard. I, I wanted to ask you, would you agree? First, I want to ask you, would you agree that a parent child, I guess you would say a parent child relationship affects the relationships that child has later on, like romantically? Yeah, I do think, you know, I I had to understand, like, having a girl first. I wanted a boy so bad. I wanted a little me so bad. But I also realized that I had to be softer because I yeah. needed, like, God gave me a daughter because I needed to be softer in life. Mm-hmm. I was already hard. I was going through certain things and, like, points in my life where I didn't need to be that rough at that age. And yeah. it could have went really left for me. And it was like, okay, I have to be softer. But now I, I realize, too, as I grow up, you know, I'm 24 now, but I do feel like I have an above average level of thinking. Okay. Mm-hmm. I do really feel like that I'm building even though she's a girl now, she's becoming a woman. Yeah. And I have to be willing to let her go to another man. So now I have to raise her to be the right type of woman that that's going to be able to spot BS from a mile yeah. away. Yeah. She got to be able to stand up for herself. She got to be confident in herself. And then she has to also know, like, look, I don't need no man for nothing. Right. But in order to be, you know, giving her that feminine energy, even though I don't have yes. it, I have to instill in her that feminine energy so it can naturally grow. Mm-hmm. And those are things that, you know, I've realized. Do you co-parent or is it just you? No, I co-parent. How is that? Uh, I mean, you know, co-parenting is co-parenting. I think it's, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you have, you have your times. You know, I, I don't think me and my, you know, my daughter's mom, we don't get along a lot. Yeah. But then again, you know, I've also had to learn how to forgive her, mm. which I'm still not done yet, done with yet, just yet. Yeah, but, um, you know, I'm working on it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's a process. You talk, We talked about the relationship of your father and how you lived with your grandparents, right? What's the relationship with your mom? And do you feel like that determined the person that, you had your daughter with or even moving forward the relationships that you get into moving forward my mom that's my dog you know what i'm saying like, that's that's my dog you know she uh she got my back through thick and thin and i yeah. got her back so you know uh we got into it a lot when i was teenager you yeah know, yeah clashing. it's always that it's always oh my god that when you're a teenager yeah. it's just you I, man, <laughs> start getting in fights and going crazy oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> i mean i remember it was one time she kicked my door in like yeah. i slammed the door Kicked it in, like kicked the door in, came like, off. I'm like, oh my god, you crazy! And I tell you that, <laughs> and uh, we, we got into it a lot of times. But you know, I've also realized like she just loves me and she wants the best for me. Yeah. Um, when it came to women, though, I think I was a little hard headed. You know, mm-hmm. I think, um, you know, I had style, young. You mm-hmm. know, I had some swag. You know, I could I could articulate myself a little better than most. Um, and always move with confidence. And naturally, when you're like that, you start attracting women. Yeah. Yeah. And I think my problem was I let women get to me too easily. Mm -hmm. And I was doing stuff I wasn't supposed to be doing. And, um, you know, I started choosing women that didn't even align with what I stood for. Mm -hmm. But I was just doing it just because it was, I wouldn't say it was easy, but I could obtain it a lot easier than most. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, I started growing up and I'm like, bro, it's not cool. It's not, it's not cool to have a mm-hmm. whole bunch of girls. It, it, it's like, I know men now who are older than me in their thirties and, and just running through women. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, bro, at some point you got to grow up. Cause like, if you really want to build a legacy, you need a road dog. You need somebody that's going to stand there by your side. That's right. going to have your back. Yeah. A girl can switch up at any time. If you just right. dating and you got multiple girls, she ain't going to believe you. She ain't going to trust them. She don't Facts. want the best for you. You know, she can say she do, but in reality, there's 10 other dudes that could do 10 more for uh, 10 times more for her. Right. So sure. you got to have somebody that's trying to be loyal to you. And, sure. um, you know, I found somebody that's like that. And it's like, you know, it's cool to bounce ideas off this person. And it's cool to like, really like have somebody in my household that, really is not only working to be the best version of herself, but mm-hmm. wants me to be the best version of me. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. I have a, Go ahead, Yon. Okay. I was just going to ask, so people have strong opinions about what I'm about to ask you. Mm. How do you feel about children getting spanked? Um, Man, I don't want to get canceled, but <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? I, I do believe, you know, at some point you do have to discipline your children. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I do think, I think we're, you have to, like, some people go to, whipping their children Mm -hmm. because they didn't stop it nip the stuff in the bud Mm -hmm. so for me like i get serious first time around Mm -hmm. we're not about to be doing this Mm -hmm. yeah i'm not one of them Mm -hmm. and i'm gonna show you yeah but i don't i don't hit my daughter you know what i mean i just i I sit her down and i talk to her and i have a real conversation with her but i also believe parents as unfortunate as it is they only they they grew up a certain way Mm -hmm. and that's all they know 
Yeah. Right. And, you know, I grew up a certain way. And then I thought that's all I, all I knew until I met better parents. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh, that's how you can do it. And then I start seeing how their kids grew up. And I'm like, oh, they, they turned out pretty good. So maybe I'll take a couple of these different things from these people that are yeah. great parents in my eyes. Mm -hmm. And I'll start, you know, doing that for my child. And that's something that, you know, I always learn from every person I meet. And also allowing the child to express themselves. A lot of times we're told, be quiet, or I said so. If they ask why, are mm -hmm. you saying that you can't do this? Why can't you do that? Right. And they're saying, oh, because I said so. And so yeah. what ways do you allow your daughter to express herself but also still be respectful mm -hmm. and not just be a thing of like, I hate you, dad, or like something, yeah. <laughs> something crazy? <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, you got to sometimes kids, man, you got to remember, you got to let them bump their own heads. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's an experience thing. You know, you you can't really certain. I can't just tell you not to do it. Yeah. I have to let you bump your head a couple of times and then tell you why you shouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel good, did it? You know, my daughter, right. she she would be doing certain stuff like climbing on top of, you know, counters <laughs> and doing yeah. like getting snacks and stuff without just asking. Yeah. And then it was one time she fell. And she cried real bad. Mm -hmm. And I sat her down. And I said, it hurt, didn't it? <laughs> She's like, yes. And it's just tears. And I'm like, wipe your eyes. You okay? Yeah. Wipe it off. Yeah. And I told her, I'm like, look, this is why you have to ask. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Mm -hmm. Yes. And then from now on after that, she just she asked. moving forward. Fr refrigerator yeah. is a different ball game. She opens the refrigerator. She goes in. She do what, he, what she wants. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but after that, it's, it's, you have to let them bump their head, let them learn, and then tell them what they learned. Mm -hmm. Because they have to, like their children they don't really understand just yet so you have to let them bump their head let them learn and then tell them what they learned mm -hmm. so it can yeah. be like solidified in their brain mm -hmm. yeah. yeah what a, um so even for you growing up as a child and a teenager uh you said you know you used to be wild and stuff so yeah. what were some of the ways you bump your head and then mm. maybe your mama came back and was like see look like uh, <laughs> I, yeah, just nah, too. I have one one story and one story that's crazy like you know, my I used to come home from school and my grandmother would sometimes pick me up. Mm -hmm. And my mom used to always say, like, she was at work, she'd call my grandma, she'd talk to me, she'd like, how's school? I'm like, good. Yeah. And then she'd be like, don't go outside until you do that homework. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I remember this one day, I'm like, I called her, I'm like, yeah, I finished my homework. Didn't even touch the homework. Yeah. I go outside, I ride my bike, chilling with my friends, and a fly flies into my eye. Oh, and then cool. I go, my grandma, I scream, I'm going home. Like, mm. I got my friends riding my bike back, I'm crying, running down the street. I walk in. And I, when she calls, she she calls my mom like he got a fly stuck in his eye. <laughs> and it was crazy. She was like, "What?" And then she came home and she was like, she looked through my book bag after I got it out and I was chilling. She's like, "You ain't even touch your homework." She's like, "That's why that happened to you." Yeah, I'm like, crazy. Ah, I see. So I always realized, and and it was a, a good concept to learn because it's like work before you play. Mm -hmm. yes. And now it was like, that was a situation in my life where now I understand, you know, I play games now, you know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm 24. I, I get on the game sometimes. And it's yeah. like, you know, I also realize my work comes first. So from, that's why from five to 11 or five to one, whatever time frame I give myself to work, you know, I work. And then at night is when I play it. At night is when I chill, mm -hmm. um, depending on the day. So if it's a weekend, it's a little different though. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> so you had mentioned that uh, you are dating somebody now. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to know what this in general, well, how long, how long have y'all been dating? Uh, almost seven months now. Okay. So yeah. before then, what does dating look like as a successful entrepreneur? Like, I feel like dating in 2023, uh, in being in your 20s, <laughs> <laughs> in your 20s is like wild nowadays. Like just with everything going on, yeah. you got yeah. this whole city girl movement with, uh, Women, well, I feel yeah, like y'all, yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 like um, expecting this, this and the next and <laughs> all of that. So Money. what, yeah, <laughs> right. so what is dating like for you as a successful entrepreneur, 24 <laughs> years old, in 2023? Uh, I'm glad it's better. Um, it was bad. I ain't gonna lie. Like, uh, what's some stories? Yeah, what's the worst? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, yeah, tell us what these, these Ooh, about these girls tough. you done encountered. That's tough. Um, you know, I, I met a lot of good women, mm -hmm. but I was balancing a lot of women at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I, I, you know, I got to a point in my life where I'm like, Dad, that's kind of messed up. And then mm -hmm. I had, you know, hurt people hurt people. So I yeah. got hurt. And I would, I, in my way of getting over that hurt was running through women. Mm. and then I started meeting a lot of women that really, really liked me, but I didn't yeah. like them, mm. oh, and I was just doing it, and it was just like, it was like, what was your point of doing it, and yeah. then 
it got to the point where it was like women crying and stuff like that and they really wanted to be with me and i never had the intentions to be with them and then i started maturing i'm like dad yeah. that, how would it feel if somebody did that to you yeah and i had to put myself in their shoes and um you know my dating life has been uh better now you know yeah. but before it was just like constant new women in my life mm -hmm. all the time mm -hmm. and then i I couldn't be with myself for a period of time. Yeah. It was always a different girl at my house. Mm -hmm. So it was like, you know, certain stuff I just, I didn't respect about myself. Mm -hmm. and, and then I grew as a man. I was like, that shit not cool, bro. Yeah. That's yeah. Like growth. No, for yeah, real. Or well, I'm sure so, even learning, like even learning the lesson of how would I feel this is happening to my daughter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yes. Exactly. And now I got to have these conversations with her or, you know, I got to rest somebody up. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> for you real. With my daughter. No, <laughs> so, for real. It's just that that mindset change and that yeah. perspective. Yeah. yeah, I wanted to ask you: um, how, Do you think all men cheat? Do I think all men cheat? Um, that's a very general question. I, I don't think all men cheat. Okay. You know, I do think. Here's the thing. What about successful men? A lot of successful men do cheat. Really? Um, I'm be honest. Like a lot of do, a lot of them do. Um, let me tell you: There's two different perspectives that I have. There's men who aren't as successful in life, who just want love. Mm -hmm. And those men are not willing to mess up what they have with that woman. Mm -hmm. And I respect those men. Then there are successful men who have easy access to women. Because if you think about it, a lot of women nowadays want a man who has more money than them. Yeah. What comes with that is a man who's busy. And what comes with that is other women who wants that man because they, he has yeah. more money. And I think, you know, for me, I don't think every man cheats. Mm -hmm. But I do think a good amount of them cheat. And I do think we got to define what cheating is, though, because yeah. if I'm not dating you, if, if you're not my girl, it's not cheating. It's that I'm exploring my options yeah. and sure. I respect men who, who let women like know that. So like when I got to the point where I was starting to tell women that they started to respect me more. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. if I'm talking to somebody else on the side, they already know about it. They're not tripping. Mm -hmm. They respect me for it. But it's disrespectful to be doing certain stuff like, mm -hmm. yeah. you know. Y'all know what I mean, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you used to, so let me ask you this. Did you used to be like sneaky or like cheat, like the societal form of cheating? Like, all right, babe, I'm with a girl. We locked in and then I just move out with somebody else. Links. Like sneaky links and side chicks and stuff um, like that. Like for me, I never like dated. Like I'm, I've only had like three relationships in my life. Yeah. Like girlfriend, mm -hmm. this is my girlfriend. And when I'm, if you're my girlfriend, I'm not doing none of that. Like yeah. every girl getting blocked. I'm not, there's no if, ands, or buts. Uh, I'm not trying to link up with you. Yeah. I don't care to give you business advice. You can go watch a YouTube video. <laughs> I don't. Because uh, I have that much respect for my girl. Yeah. But if if we just like dating, like how my situation now, if, it, if we just dating and we're kind of getting to that point, I lessen up on that stuff. Yeah. Um. But at points of time, I did like, mm -hmm. you know, juggle multiple women at the same time. So, yeah. yeah it's, not, you, it's not a good thing though. How do you feel about, you know, people or even yourself in that moment if you were doing dirt while at this level in life, you know, it can become a thing of, oh, I'm with Tez. And now, you know, they're letting people know where you're at. And that yeah. can turn into a thing of now people blowing up your spot. They know your location. Facts. They can pull up on you. Yeah. So yeah. what's your mindset and thought process behind that of pivoting if you were doing dirt while getting this, attaining this level of success? Yeah, that was a situation I had. It was like um, you have so many women mm -hmm. around you. And know where you at and at your house and stuff yeah that it's easy to get caught up mm -hmm. yeah. and um you know i come from cleveland so i'm like i'm for me if i'm being honest i'm like i'm about that smoke like if you yeah. want to, we, can, we can do that but i don't want to go to that you know what right. I mean? like that's yeah. not who i am i don't look for it mm -hmm. yeah. but if you want it you can get you can catch it you know right. what i'm saying sure. so it's like for me it was like i noticed that too many women was coming to my house mm -hmm. and you know they respected me but i also you can't expect every person to have best interest for you yeah. yeah and um you know i always like in cleveland you know for me i, I moved into a gated community instantly mm -hmm. even now i'm in gated community so even i have to have different layers to even get to me That's even right. if it comes okay. to contacting me on social media you got to go through you know uh my assistant and then my assistant has to go through another person and then they tell me so yeah. there's different layers i need mm -hmm. to have different walls so like yeah if you get through my gated community cool mm -hmm. but then you got to get through my house which has alarm systems multiple locks on it you get through yeah. my house now you got to get through me and you know, <laughs> yeah. Really. so yeah you know that's how i kind of view things and that's, and that's how i maneuver no, i feel that oh uh, so when it comes to dating what type of person are you in a relationship are you like a 50 50 type of guy or like you take care of half i take care of half um or even are you the type of guy that feels like all right i'm doing everything i'm flying you out i'm getting you the bags i'm doing all of this like right. how are you um you know luckily for me i'm in a position where i i don't do 50 50 
Um, mm-hmm. It's just me. You know what I mean? I got you, period. Um, not every man is in that position, though. So right. I, I respect men who who do, like, as much as they can. Mm-hmm. Um, if you do have more and you're trying to do 50-50, it don't really make sense to me. Yeah. Um, and, you know, again, this is my opinion. But right. I, for sure. my grandfather took care of everything. So for me, it's like I take care of everything. So the roof yeah. over your head and the clothes and stuff like that um, is all good. But also you have to have a woman that wants more for herself mm-hmm. so she can have her own bag. Like I can buy her a Louis Vuitton purse like Valentine's Day. I got her a nice purse mm-hmm. and stuff like that and really nice stuff. And she appreciated it. But then in return, got me crazy stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you don't have that like that balance there, it's going to be hard for you to want to do stuff for people. Right. So like you know, I constantly buy flowers and stuff like that cuz it's like it's the nice thing to do and that's what yeah. women like. So. Yeah. But would sure. you rather date somebody that and that goes into uh the question that I have cuz you just said like, "Oh, I got her this, but she got me this." Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> like she returned the favor, you know what I'm saying? It's not just the oh like you know what you're getting tonight type thing. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like that whole routine, but she literally got you something. Yeah. Like, right. So what do you think about um, dating an entrepreneur female or somebody that like somebody or at least somebody that has her own bag mm-hmm. versus dating somebody that might not have a bag, but she's still, you know, spiritually, emotionally and just supports you in general. Like, what do you feel about that? I think, man, like whether a woman gets a lot of money or not doesn't really matter to me Facts. right now in my point of life, because like I'm the money I make is. The money yeah, yeah, make. For, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. So I don't really worry about stuff like that, or yeah. if she has a job. No, actually, let me re- let me rewind. <laughs> <laughs> That's a rewind. 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 Uh, she has to have some type of hustle. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. If you have no hustle, you can't even come like five feet close to me. Mm-hmm. I, I don't even. I don't play that stuff. Like, cause okay. that energy rubs off on me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, if, like, you know, the the girl I'm with now, she's like her hustle is a, more than I've seen in most women that i've ever yeah. dealt with yeah. so it's like it makes me want to go harder because now she going ten thousand times contagious. yeah it's yeah. contagious and now the household is like you know i think too she's very feminine so she cooks she clean i don't worry about that stuff mm-hmm. but now it allows me to sit down and be more creative mm-hmm. and uh shout out to my brother aristotle you know me and him have had a conversation he's married and he's been married for like i think five six years yeah but one thing he told me was like bro when you settle down and you stop messing with all these girls you're gonna see your life get a lot less stressful you're gonna be a lot less anxious and you're gonna make a lot more money yeah Yeah. over the last seven months my business has just continuously grown and i'm like i would rather this and this happiness and to come home and there's food on the table and yeah and you know like right now i'm fasting you know what i mean so it's like she wakes up at 5 30 in the morning just to cook me breakfast Mm -hmm. and then goes back to sleep Mm -hmm. and she has to be at she has to go do her thing at at eight so it's like you know that's certain stuff that women i don't i don't know too many women that's gonna do that hold on one second real quick don't skip this i got some important news for you this is your boy CEO of Sean. And I need you guys to check out the audio. We are on Spotify. We on Apple Music. And we on Apple Podcasts. You can't miss out on the audio. Listen to how I sound right now. You definitely can't miss out on the end. Don't forget, make sure you check out the merchandise. You know what I'm saying? Definitely get you some social proof merch. Make sure you in the right attire so you can be flyer. Now back to the podcast episode. Yeah. She sounds amazing. I was about to say, like, because that goes into this question I got. So do you think... Because, again, like, a woman that can be feminine and masculine at the same time, masculine as in, like, hey, other guys tried to come at me, like, nah, like, this my guy, like, I'm doing my thing, and I'm still going to provide for you, take care of you, and do and have my own hustle, right? right? Like, shout out to your girl. Yeah, shout out to her. <laughs> but um, do you think, like, when do you think you'd be ready to start including her in, like, almost like you're building the legacy with her mm-hmm. or for her? Like, when is that conversation? Like, when we're married or, like, I just... Like, dang, girl, like, let's start this now. Like, we're going to start right. doing this legacy together now. <laughs> um, I think it just depends on the relationship, you know. Um, there's no time frame you could put on that. Yeah. You know, you got to kind of feel those type of things out, you know. Um, love comes at different points in time. You can Facts. instantly fall in love with somebody or you can wait two years before you love somebody. Mm. Three years, four years before you really love somebody. Um, so the conversation, I, I mean, I haven't had it just yet. But, you know, the thing, too, is like she's with me every day. Yeah. So it's like we're already in that motion now to where it's like kind of already like that. So I'm yeah. like, I don't really need to have the conversation. Um, but the big thing is like she's around my daughter, too. So yeah. it's yeah. like I have the utmost respect for her because now she doesn't have kids, but she looks at her as her own kid. Mm-hmm. I love that. And, and that's a different level of like because, again, you can have I've seen women even like family members like they stepmoms don't like kids yeah mm-hmm. there's no way i can marry you if you don't like kids or if you don't even at least want to have kids because exactly. I, I need a like you said a legacy if i don't have 
seven kids. We have a problem. <laughs> yeah. Nick Cannon, seven. <laughs> we have a problem. You know, I'm already one in, so I need you know I need a fleet. So a couple more. Yeah, I need so, a fleet. Um, marriage is important to you. Absolutely. How do you feel about getting a prenup? Mm. Ooh, I'm, I might get canceled for this one. I, <laughs> I do believe that, at, like, there's different things you got to think about, man. Like, as a man, I, and I, we just had this conversation yesterday on another podcast. It was like, you know, what if the woman makes more money than the man? Mm-hmm. As a man, you should want more for yourself, period. Right. So it doesn't matter what my, my girl bring in. Mm-hmm. It just matters what I'm doing for myself. And can I can I work hard enough to actually prove that I'm worth having, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then there's the aspect of the man making more. I personally believe, and the reason I, I do think, you know, I would want a prenup is because asset protection. Right. Mm-hmm. I, I came in with all of this stuff. Mm-hmm. There is no way right. I'm about to break this 50-50. Yeah. Yeah. However, I understand what women say, your business grew because I came in. Yeah. I understand that. Mm-hmm. But if you have my kid, you're set, period. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But if you never have my kid, I'm not about to break this 50-50 yeah. because you can't just say that um, because you came in, it happened like this. Because if you never came in, it, it was going to still grow, period. Yes. Right. So, like, to me, it's like I protect. I don't. The thing people don't think about when it comes to prenups is the court fees. Mm-hmm. Y'all mm-hmm. both get hit on that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Splitting up the, the kids like and like yeah. all of that. It comes with a lot more stuff. Mm-hmm. So, like, I personally believe that, like. People should be able to have conversations like this earlier before you get married. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, yeah, hopefully I don't get canceled for that. But like, <laughs> I do, think, get I do think successful men should should definitely get a prenup mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. And it's not that. And then I think women should change their perspective from not should, but could mm-hmm. change their perspective from he doesn't want to be with me long term mm-hmm. to I can see where he's coming from. Because yeah. if I came into this and I had more than him, ain't no way right. I'm about to get him. Right. You see what I'm saying? So you just got to understand where we coming from in that. So. Yeah. Cause it's all about like, again, like it's just about equal value. Cause when you do a prenup anyway, it's basically just protecting yourself. Mm-hmm. But it's basically like, you know, like, you know, some women, they think of it like, Oh, he doesn't really love me. He doesn't care about me because they're attaching your love to money. Exactly. Like they're attaching your love to like the, the money you provide and stuff like that. But if they haven't been with you a long enough time, because again, you say you're doing it for five years. Yeah. And she and you've been with your girl right now for seven months. Exactly. And you've built this and she's only been here for seven months. Exactly. <laughs> so Same it's only like, all right, man, I'll give you seven months worth or eight months worth, but like not the whole thing because you've built this from the ground up and she wasn't there. Yeah. Not to say anything against her. It's not that you don't love her any less, but it's just, hey, I gotta protect myself, babe. Like yeah. that's just what is that's what, I like that. Yeah. Like you shouldn't be can't don't cancel him. <laughs> <laughs> Do not cancel him for that. Like I love that. For yeah, some for reason, sure. certain stuff that I say go viral, viral. And I, <laughs> man, I be getting cooked sometimes on the ground. But, you know, it is, I speak on what I speak on. I, I, I tell that. Like in canceled or, you know, creating a little controversy. Um, you know, sometimes it affects me. You know, I have emotions. I'm human too. Right. You know, so certain stuff kind of stings when people say certain stuff because, and then I also realized that, you know, you don't know who I am. Mm-hmm. And I've also realized exactly. when I, the times I went viral and I got, you're going to always get negativity when you go viral, period. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It may be because of how you look. It may be because the pants or the shirt that you wore. It, I've heard some of the craziest, stupid stuff mm-hmm. under the post that went viral with me. Yeah. Um, but for me, it's like, I always take this perspective of like, who's going to be at my funeral? Mm. Like and what are you doing right now? To <laughs> That's good. Yeah. 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 This funeral, yeah, yeah. Like, for real. It's like you're not gonna be in my funeral, but to take it a step farther, are you gonna help my child? Or are you gonna help my family when I'm yeah. gone? Mm-hmm. So I can't respect what you got to say. And then you gotta also remember that these people are flawed too. You hiding mm-hmm. behind right. uh, a picture of a cat on mm-hmm. your Instagram, yeah. but you got something to say to me. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'm out here, I'm putting my life out here, and I'm transparent. You know, my name is good. It's clean. Yeah. So like so it's like I, I can't respect everything sure. everybody say with viral oh go ahead oh well you can go, I'll okay. go after, oh. well I was gonna say <laughs> <laughs> so with being canceled do you ever feel like you've been canceled from maybe even like your hometown saying uh well from this point of view so you built this success but it's like oh Tez ain't the same anymore he don't really <laughs> mess with us no more like <laughs> stuff like that have you dealt with things like that oh yeah absolutely I mean I get it all the time or you make too much money or you like you know I used to go in the store um when I lived in Cleveland and I, I was blowing up while I was there mm-hmm. so people just started knowing who I was it wasn't yeah. a time where I could go in the store without somebody walking up to me mm. and then I'm like um you know this one guy was like we got rich boy here Mm. And I'm like, dude, don't say mm. stuff like that out loud because you never know who's listening, exactly. who's watching me. Right. And then I just started watching my back a little bit more. Um, but Do you have security? 
Uh, it depends on where I'm going. Gotcha. Um, you know, if they're, if I'm going to the club, for sure. I'm not yeah. like, even my birthday, like. You're not you, just outside. Oh, and just absolutely <laughs> not. Right yeah. now, I don't even, I think the last time I went out to a club was January 10th, which is my birthday. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. months ago. So I don't kick it in a club no more because I don't want to be in that scene no more. Yeah. Um, but what I've also realized is like, I can understand why they think I'm different because I am different. I'm mm -hmm. not the same yeah. person I was. And again, you got to re-meet me because right. things that I know now, you got to pay me to know. Right. Like, if I teach nice. you something, you got to pay me Come for on. that. Come on, huh? <laughs> Hey, yeah, look, like this is a business, baby. I love you, but it's like, it's like I'm not about to be giving out yeah. my game. I mean, I give out game for free on social media, so yeah. why not just Fact. go to yeah. follow you give me out on game in these podcast yeah. exactly. interviews that you're doing stuff yeah. like that for free. Yeah, yeah. So, everybody so be looking at you. I have one more question about the whole going viral and stuff. Yeah, was there ever a pivotal comment that caused you to have anxiety when you mm. or you know move a certain way? You may not have seen something that you've seen before within yourself, mm. and they point it out. And so now, when you go out to public places, you're telling yourself in your mind, you're kind of trying to play the fact of okay, I'm still trying to act like myself but I'm also have this thing in the back of my mind this comment that stuck with me and now I have I feel as though I have to move a certain way I can't move as I used to um yeah I, I dealt with something like that last year you know mm -hmm. it gave me an extreme amount of anxiety you know mm -hmm. it was a person that was really close to me I looked at as a mentor and um you know me and him didn't agree on something you know mm -hmm. what I mean he thought I did something that I didn't do I showed the receipts he didn't believe me and then went to Twitter and, you know, it kind of blew up. And in the space that I was in, it was like everybody knew me and him. Like, we're close. Yeah. And it really hurt. You know what I mean? Like, you know, for a, a month straight, I could not look at myself in the mirror. Because mm. I started thinking that what he said was true, but I knew what was true. But because I valued his opinion so much, mm -hmm. it was like I let that weigh so much on me. And then I couldn't move forward with life, period. I didn't want to be around nobody. When my daughter came around, I was sad. Mm -hmm. My energy was off. And it was like it affected me. And even to this day, it sometimes yeah. still affects me. It might pop up into my head. But I also realized, who are you to judge me? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, the, the things that you've done, you, you might keep your skeletons in the closet. In. And, you know, if I do something wrong, I apologize. Mm -hmm. I, I'm human. I messed up. It wasn't intentional. Yeah. I may have done something that, you know, and again, I give myself grace sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I had to learn how to heal from that. It took a year and a half just to heal from that. And I'm yeah, still not sure. done healing yeah. from it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I've also realized that, you know, everybody has done something bad. Everybody right. got yeah. skeletons in their closet. So, you know, to kind of pull somebody else's and throw them out there or at least try yeah. or mm -hmm. make it seem like you're about to just to kind of have them on the string. Yeah. You know, it just says a lot about your character. That's yeah. good. Hey, y'all. It's Jada, your favorite couture fashion designer. And I know you're really enjoying this episode. But before you keep watching, I have to tell you, you need to go and check us out on all streaming platforms. Make sure you go follow us right now on Spotify, Apple Music, Apple Podcasts, all that good stuff. And make sure you go and get this merch. It look good, don't it? It look good, right? Okay, it can look good on you too. So make sure you go and get the merch, follow us, and now you can continue the episode. Okay. Was that ever a conscious thing for you to realize? Or I know you mentioned that, um, if I'm not mistaken, you have been in therapy before, right? Yeah. And so as black men, sometimes that may be a thing of, all right, I don't really want to go to therapy because I don't want to talk about it. Did you ever have a stigma w within yourself saying like, I don't want to go to therapy or were you open and free to doing it? And how has it helped you since going? Um, I always thought I was just tough. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know, tough skin, you know what I mean? Just not like shrug it off. And then I realized, man, like it's poisonous. Mm -hmm. That trauma that you deal with, those things you deal with is worse than smoking cigarettes. Yeah. So it was like, how bad do I want to heal from this? How bad do I want to get over this? How bad do I just want to be better? Mm -hmm. yeah. And what does it require of me? I can't just sit with myself sometimes because it don't work. I always yeah. have my own opinion of myself. So I need an outside opinion. I need somebody who doesn't know anything about me or who I am or who, where I came from and what I stand on. I need them to come in with their perspective of what they think to teach me. Mm -hmm. And you got to be open minded to learn. So I've, I've always said, you know, you got to stay a sponge and a student to the game. Mm -hmm. You ain't going to never be able to hit the top, the top levels without learning from each person in the above level. Yeah. But it takes you being self-conscious and not saying like, I'm the best and I'm this way and you yeah. know, mucho. Like I'm, I'm just like yeah. this, this tough guy. Like <laughs> I had to let that guard down. It was like, I'm not that tough. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah, fragile sure. sometimes, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But as black yeah. men, we don't, we don't talk about that. You know, we, we got to also realize the traumas that we've dealt with in our lives. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? A lot of things that we've dealt with are things that most people don't see in life, mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. Certain things that I've seen, no person should ever see. 
but it's like you know i had to see it you know what i mean mm -hmm. and, and it made me who i am today so i appreciate it i wish i never went through it but it it, it, it made me who i am so yeah, i have a question sure. so what because i i can resonate with that so much like i was at a point where i was in middle school and i was suicidal because my problem was i was I was caring about everybody else. Mm -hmm. Like everybody else had an opinion. I was getting bullied at one point and it was just like st everything stacked. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. it pushed me to that point where it was just like, all right, I don't know. So I literally like had a knife under my bed, all that stuff, went to sleep. And I said, Hey, like I'm gonna wake up and then end it. And then basically I woke up long story short and the knife fell on the floor apparently. And then my mom came in the room, stopped me and then she put me in therapy too. Mm -hmm. And therapy for me didn't help. Mm -hmm. Only because, well, it helped a little bit, but there were certain things that I was kind of holding on to. There are certain traumas that I didn't face. So, like, there's probably, like, a young 18-year-old, 17-year-old, 16-year-old that's probably watching this podcast, and there's still a trauma that they're going through that me and you both have gone through. What trauma do you think that they're hiding that they need to, like, focus on and fix mm -hmm. before they can actually grow? I mean, I think you just got to be honest with yourself sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, it's one thing. We all have a consciousness yeah. And the consciousness is always true. Mm. It's always right. You can say what you want out your mouth, but mm -hmm. up here it's always true. And it's hard sometimes to say something that's false and knowing that the truth is in here. Yeah. And, you know, I got to the point where it was like, how much do I respect myself? Because I can't go against what this is saying because this yeah. is who I am. And what I say is just a, 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 by, a byproduct of what this is producing. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was like, you know, to, to any person who's dealing with anxiety and stress and, and feeling suicidal, you know, you got to look at those core things that mean the most to you. What's your mm -hmm. why? You know, I cut, you know, I've had times where I felt suicidal and I also realized if I, if I'm gone, my daughter doesn't have somebody to look up to mm -hmm. and they don't, she doesn't have somebody to protect her. So I can't be like that. I got to move yeah. past it, but that's mm -hmm. who I am. I, I, I cope over things differently than the most people. Facts. Um, but it's also my environment and how I was raised. I was forced to be pushed over certain things. I can't, yeah. you, you, I was forced to suppress your emotions, keep moving forward. Don't let nobody see you cry, period. Mm -hmm. And um, I learned a lot from that. So I would say, you know, any person that's feeling anxious, I think you got to change your day-to-day -day habits and what you're seeing and what you're listening yeah. to. You know, I've also realized people who are like that, they listen to music like, I, you know, I like young boys sometimes, but I also realize that a lot of that music is very negative. No, so like you want to gang bang so bad and you think you're about yeah. that life until you really meet somebody who's about that and was born yeah. like that and was raised in that. And then, you know, you got to come to terms with like, oh, I'm really not like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you got to be OK with it. You know, what I mean, same thing for me. It was like, you know, my mom kept me out the hood as much as she could, mm -hmm. but I was around the people who was like that. So yeah. it was like it rubbed off on me a little bit until I met somebody and I got into it with somebody who was really like that. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't want that. You know what I mean? I don't want to go down that path. Yeah. So you got to ask yourself what path you want to go down. But also I think going to the gym helps a lot of men, you know, and, and even women. I think it's both like you yeah, have to sure. tend to your mind mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the best way to do so is working on your physical mm -hmm. yeah. and putting that time in an hour a day or two hours a day in the gym. That, that changed my life. What do you yeah. think doing to the, cause you know, like, cause you know, almost podcasts and most different, like even social media, they're like, oh yeah, work out all this stuff. And then they'll just be vague with it. Like just work out. What does working out like do for you? I know, but like, what is, what do you think working out does for you specifically? I mean, for me, it, it not only does it allow me to spend more time with myself, yeah. um, but it allows me to work on my physique, but it allows me to push out my frustrations, push mm -hmm. out the things that I'm scared of, the things that I fear. Mm. Like I don't have to go say those things because I can pick up a weight and just let it out. You know, there were certain times I used to go through things in high school um that i just felt like i could not go to school like the next day i couldn't go to school yeah. but when i went to the gym and i and i and i started realizing like everything i hated i could just let out in the gym and it also paid off in my body mm -hmm. i was like that's the best trade-off you can possibly have you know what sure. i mean so so you can you don't have to show it's so basically you're using the gym like the way that you use the gym is you just like all right bet i'm gonna work out i'm gonna put this work in um and i'm gonna make sure that i take all this energy everything that i'm feeling and i'm gonna push it through these weights i'm gonna push it when i lift this thing i'm gonna do it when i do a squat when mm -hmm. i do a leg press whatever it is so does that work with that works with anything like boxing wrestling i did wrestling at one point that's yeah. i loved it it was so because i had so much I had so much anger towards the world, towards like, like after my, I lost my sister, I, I was just angry at the world, angry at God, angry at everybody. Mm -hmm. Cause I was just like, I logically couldn't make sense of anything. And I never processed my emotions until I started wrestling. Yeah. And after I did that, slamming somebody on a mat and it, knowing that it was me doing it and it wasn't anybody else. It was just, it just felt so exhilarating almost. Mm -hmm. Cause it was like all this emotion that I had and I just released it. I feel like that's what the gym is for you. You're just releasing all that trauma, everything that you're feeling 
into getting stronger and you're getting a benefit from it. Every person should have an outlet and it looks different for every person. You know what I mean? I might go to the gym and hoop for three hours straight and mm-hmm. run straight until I can't breathe no more. Yeah. But sometimes that make me feel better. But it's healthy. It's healthy. Yeah. 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 I like that. I like working out too because it brings me back to my values. Mm-hmm. Like during the day, you know, we get busy, stuff starts to cloud our mind. But when I work out, it's like my vision comes back to my mind. You Absolutely. Know? Mm-hmm. So what else do you do that grounds you? Um, right now is Ramadan, so we're fasting. Um, this is my first attempt of going th- all 30 days without breaking my fast at all. Okay. Um, or breaking or at least not showing up on one of the days. Yeah. Um, I let my mind, I felt like my mind was too weak in the past yeah. to let myself do it all 30 days. So right mm-hmm. now I took it serious and I said, look, I got, I got, I have to make these sacrifices. Mm-hmm. I have to prove to God that, look, I'm willing to sacrifice everything to show you that, you know, you created me for a reason and my purpose mm-hmm. is bigger than just me. And I'm, I'm here to deliver what you wanted me to deliver. Yeah. Um, and so fasting has been huge. You know, my clarity level now is the reason I'm able to articulate myself like this. You know, mm-hmm. if I'm smoking and drinking and stuff, I'm not at 100%. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know when that stuff sits in your body you know i smoked a lot mm-hmm. recently a lot yeah <laughs> like every day yeah but i also realized like yeah you get some type of creativity and you get over stress but you're just masking the things that you're going through in life yeah. mm-hmm. and when i realized that you know i talked to my therapist yesterday and he was like you can either fix your traumas or you can manage them managing them is completely different from fixing them mm-hmm. fixing them is addressing it right there in the face you you take time it's gonna take you a minute it's gonna hurt but you dig yourself out right yeah mm-hmm. Managing it is smoking and drinking and going out and doing those things that you don't need to be doing just to make you feel better in the moment. Mm-hmm. But guess what? At nighttime, you still got to deal with it. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's what you're going to do at the end of the day. Yeah. You're going to keep yeah. doing the same cycle or you're going to change things. Yeah. So, um, I will, Oh, go ahead. Oh, I wanted to say just for the people who don't know what Ramadan is, could you explain to the people that's watching uh, like what it is, what it means to you and just everything that you're doing throughout Absolutely. it? Yeah, so it's a, it's a very holy month in the Islamic religion. Um, you know, I lived in Egypt for four years of my life, so I have a very uh, acute uh, aspect or I would say perception of how I view my religion. Mm-hmm. Um, I've, I've sinned a lot. You know, I have mm-hmm. tattoos when I shouldn't. And, yeah. you know, I, I'm, I did things that I'm not proud of. Um, but I also realized that I'm human for a reason. Yeah. And I have these I have these conscious decisions on oh will god accept me if i did these things yeah. well if you if you look in any religion when you pray for forgiveness he forgives you mm-hmm. so it's like yeah i did did the certain things that weren't good and that's why this 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 month is very very important mm-hmm. this is the time where you ask for forgiveness this is where you seek refuge this is where you sacrifice things that you normally wouldn't food water sex mm-hmm. smoking drinking those are things that most people cannot let go yeah. so if you can do that for 30 days and you can show him you can do that how can you say he doesn't love you when he going to reward you forever after that? Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's, that's we good. do that once a year. Um, and, you know, Ramadan is very important to me. You know, I think it wasn't as important as I grew up because I kind of like my religion was forced onto me. I didn't have an option to go with any other thing. Um, but until I started realizing how I became as a person was because of my religion, mm-hmm. because of the discipline, because I couldn't do certain things that most people did. I don't celebrate Christmas and, and Halloween and all of those things. So my, my viewpoint on those things are different, but it allowed me to be who I am right now. Mm-hmm. So it's like you have to give sometimes to, to get something back in return. Have you it. ever been intrigued to be interested or, you know, invest your time into another religion, Christianity or Anything else other than, you know, what you believe in? Me personally, nah. Um, you know, my grandfather, he read he he read the books for Judaism, uh, Christianity, and Islam. Mm-hmm. He read all three and mm-hmm. understood the core three concepts of all three and realized that there's a lot of similarities between all of them. But there was mm-hmm. core concepts that every... Even Christians, just because you go to church on Sunday does not mean you're holy. Does not right. mean that that you're just the Definitely. perfect Christian. Because yes. you're drinking and you know you shouldn't be. Mm-hmm. Yes. You're not supposed to be putting toxins in your body. Yeah. So it's like, you know, I get comments sometimes, you know, and I don't know why it's like this, but that's the world that we live in. You know, I get comments sometimes when I speak on my religion and I'm mm-hmm. embracing it and allowing myself to be free because I have freedom of speech. Yeah. But there's people who are like, Christianity is the only way and you're going to yeah. burn in the hellfire and things like that. Yeah. And then I start thinking like, hmm. I wonder if God would have wanted you to tell somebody else about what they believe. Yeah. And then my perspective start changing. So, you know, I never had the time where I wanted to switch religions because I believe in what I believe in. And I think, you know, and nobody my can beliefs. sway you any other way. Yeah. Exactly. You know, even if you try to prove a point, it's like scientists try to say there's not there's no God. But it's like, how do we get here? 
Yeah. Right? <laughs> when you just pop up on here no, like aliens. You know, there's all these different these all these different like theories. Yeah. yeah. And you go back and look at a skeleton and now I can see this and and yeah. based off this study, mm -hmm. this, this, and this. Yeah. And it's also like, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you know, there is this thing in, in Arabic, it's El Gaib, and it means um believing in the unseen. Mm. So, you know, I believe in ghosts. Mm -hmm. I believe in aliens. I believe in, in things that I've never seen because mm -hmm. who are we to say it doesn't exist? Yeah. Right. Yeah. You've never seen it. Yeah. And then when it pops up out of nowhere, all of a sudden the whole world going crazy. <laughs> and now I'm sitting there like, well, I mean, it's, it was possible the whole time. Yeah. So, you know, I, I just, I just, that's just how I think. So. Yeah, for sure. I like that. You like, you're grounded on your, I like that you're very grounded on your principles. Mm -hmm. And like, even like you said, like your grandfather studied like those different religions. And again, there were similarities, but Again, the reason the thing that you like about it is because there's concrete principles that you can live off of like consistently. Yeah. You're just like, all right, bet. Like these are concrete things I can live by. These are also and you also like you're a logical person and you also have common sense. This is helping me. Exactly. <laughs> I'm gonna yeah. this is flesh. Like again, drinking, smoking, sex, all that stuff is just fleshly desires that yeah. we have that we don't need exactly. that are not really good for us. And if we don't do them a proper way mm -hmm. or do them in a correct way, they're bad for us. Yeah. And you're literally literally fasting from all of that like that's a good principle to have yeah. i think it's important to fast from pleasure you know your your desires um you know your desires can be very overwhelming mm -hmm. you can do some things that go against your whole morals and ethics just because of your desires but those are human those are human um emotions that you have so are you willing to put down this emotion in order to become this person mm -hmm. yeah most people can't do that that's and true. if they can it's for a short period of time so I, I like to practice consistency. None of my businesses would be seven figures, six figures. I wouldn't have none of this stuff if it mm -hmm. wasn't for consistency. The yeah. core concept of life, if you look at everything in life, like she said before we talked on this podcast, is everything grows slow. So yeah. what seems like, you know, for some people, they follow me and they think, oh, this dude just popped up out of nowhere mm -hmm. and it happened overnight for him. But you've never seen the five years of me grinding. Yeah. Right. You've never seen me delivering do-rags in my city. you never seen what it was like crying at night because I didn't have the money to make sure that this was cool mm -hmm. or yeah. not being able to eat some nights or sleeping in my car some nights. You mm -hmm. didn't see that because mm -hmm. I didn't want you to see it. Yeah. Now I let you see the things I want you to see. Mm -hmm. And like I said, social media is just a highlight reel. Yeah. You see the best of the best for everybody. And there's a couple people who who try to, you know, showcase some of the negatives that they go through. Mm -hmm. And I and I, I respect it. Mm -hmm. But it's also like every single person only wants to show you the best parts of their life. Right. Yes. So you can't like compare yourself to that because yeah. it's like you're going through negatives in real life day to day. Mm -hmm. You can't compare all of your negatives to their positives when all they're showing you is positive. Yeah. Right. So you got to take sure. a step back from that. Yeah. And so the thing that you said of, you know, people showing their highlight reels and also people just coming off of just strictly talking about business as I like this discussion because we're not just talking about business. I definitely want to get into it, you know? Um, but the last thing that I really want to get into is how you said of dealing with, you know, people dying around you. And so now you have become to a point where you've got out of the place that most people feel as though they can't get out of because that's all they see in their environment. Mm -hmm. They see people on the block every day. They see people just sitting on the corners. They losing see people, lives. you know, losing their lives, mm -hmm. a child losing their life. And so how do you, what was your thought process and what are you, what would you tell a person that that's all they see and they almost don't see no way out of it yeah. at that point? Oh, man, it's, it's, it's hard. Because, mm -hmm. you know, it, it can feel addicting or it can feel like you're, you have to stay there. Mm -hmm. um, it was a hard decision for me to move, especially because I couldn't take my daughter with me. Yeah. yeah, that was a that was very tough. You know, I still deal with it to this day emotionally, you mm -hmm. know, yeah. like her being wanting to be with me, wanting to live with me. And that's mm -hmm. something like, damn, like I, I got to wait years just because court and all of these different things are yeah. stopping me from, you know, having her with me. Um, but, you know, to the people who are seeing it every day, you got to change your environment. You only grow to what you expose to. Mm -hmm. So if you never exposing yourself to anything better, that's all you're going to know. That's like, that's yeah. all you're going to think is possible. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, I think I was a beacon of light in my city because now I was able to show people like, look, I came from here. I went through these things. Y'all kind of seen a little bit of it, but now y'all seeing where I'm at now. Y'all seeing what I went through. Y'all seeing me delivering do rags. Y'all seeing me, you know, posting mm -hmm. my results and investing and doing all these things in stock market. Y'all seen all of it. Yeah. I documented every single day of it. Yeah. I didn't know what I was doing because I was just trying to grow my social media. But now that I can go back and look through my phone, and I can see 20,000 different videos and, and, yeah. and, and pictures. Mm -hmm. I can go back and see when I was sleeping on the floor. I know the exact video that, that I was working at a factory and I had the mask on. Mm -hmm. I know exactly where it's at. So it humbles me. But I also realized that 
if you don't separate yourself from that, you're going to die there. Yeah. And that's me being honest. And like, you got to ask yourself, do I want my family to come back to my grave here? Or do I want them to come to my grave in Hawaii yeah. or, or in a different state? Mm -hmm. You just got to ask yourself what decision you want to make. But I also believe, you know, I lost a lot of good friends, man. And it's very unfortunate. Um, I kind of had got immune to it at mm -hmm. one point. Mm -hmm. You know, I heard a little baby talk about it in the interview. It was like, he lost so many people that he don't shed a tear no more. You know, I still shed tears for the people I lost. Mm -hmm. um, but certain moments, it's like, you know, in my city, there's a person dying every day. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, man, I just wish things could be better. But then I'm actively doing things mm -hmm. to try to make the environment there better so I can help other people yeah. get out of there. That's what have really you lost good. that just like had the most impact on your life and like in a negative way or in a positive way anyway like just it just shook you mm -hmm. like it was so traumatic and it just put you in like this state of almost like like you were almost just like looking at the world through like red glasses like almost mm -hmm. like why why is this so bad um i would say my grandfather um because i felt like he was one person who really understood me and he was the person who really wanted to raise me under being a great man mm -hmm. i didn't have that like i have my uncles of course but you know they yeah. got their own kids so they're not yeah. viewing me as their kids grandkids like you know when you got grandparents they love you to death yeah they do you know yeah. why <laughs> because their kids and already grew up and yeah you're, the, you're their responsibility but yeah. they like to have you all the time yeah. mm -hmm. and that was my grandfather you know he all his kids were grown but mm -hmm. yeah. we were young but we were like his kids because we was there every day i had a bed there you know what i'm saying so it's like <laughs> i'm your it's my dad you know what i'm saying <laughs> so like for me man it was like when i lost my grandfather i went through a very hard time in life you know um what's crazy is like i lost my grandfather and the next day i got cut from the basketball team mm. so it was like everything got i got slapped in the face and i started questioning god i was like why would you do this to me why me like why why couldn't i just get by on this why couldn't mm -hmm. i just get what i wanted and you're not supposed to get what you want all the time there's a reason that you don't get those things because if i never got cut multiple times from the basketball team and trying out I would have never had that dog hustle in me now because mm -hmm. if it was just given to me i would have just been expecting things in life yeah now mm -hmm. i know for a fact there's nothing in life nobody can come save me there's nothing in life that's going to be given to me there's mm -hmm. not one dollar that's been g given or handed to me unless it came from you know my mom or something like that yeah. right and there's nobody that's going to give me a, a nice car that's going to give me a nice lifestyle or the, the house that i want mm -hmm. so now i understand these things and i work hard to go get everything that i want and now i've earned it so can't nobody just take it away from me mm -hmm. and if i lose it all i know how to go get it again yeah so, that's uh, good. No, for real. Um, I wanted to know what's the role in your family now that you are now that you mm. have built that success. What role do you play in your family? Like, what's expected of you from your family? Um, you know, I can't relate to my family in a lot of ways. Um, yeah. There's certain things I just I can't have conversations with them about. You know, when they want to start businesses, they think that I can just fork up a couple thousand dollars and just like, here you go. <laughs> yeah. And. Um, it's not that I don't want to, it's not that I don't have it to do that. But if I do that, you're not going to know what it's like to work hard yeah, for it. Right. And you're going to, when you fail, you're just going to come back and try to give me another idea to get me to give you more money. And it doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, right now, my role now is just, you know, being a great son, you know, being a great grandson, being a, a great dad and, and being a great cousin and, you know, being there for them. But I've also realized, you know, they view me differently. Mm -hmm. And I can never change their perception of it because one thing that wealth does in, in building an income and a, and a good life and a, a good brand for yourself, one thing that it does is it changes everybody's perception of you. Mm -hmm. Now you look too good. You seem too good. Now you're not the same person that you mm -hmm. were. Of course, I'm not the same person yeah. I was. <laughs> That's the point. That's the point. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, you know, I've, I've, but I've also been like, I had to understand it because, mm -hmm. you know, you start growing very fast mm -hmm. and people can't fathom it because they've never seen it. Yeah. yeah. So I've done things in my family that they've never seen. Yeah. They've yeah. never seen nobody invest half a million dollars. Mm -hmm. They've never, in, especially at 22, 23, yeah. they've never seen somebody talk about buying apartment buildings or, you know, talk about, you know, all these different things or go viral so many times. They've never mm -hmm. seen it before. Yeah. So it's like magical to them. Mm -hmm. But I've also realized that, you know, I got to have sympathy because at the end of the day, I'm still a family member. So yeah. I, I try yeah. to be there for them as much as I can, you know, but you know, I, one thing for me is like my mom gave me life so financially she gets whatever she wants whatever yeah. like you know whatever situation she's going through it's she does not even have to think about me saying anything about what she's about to ask me it's instant it's cash app coming instantly the paypal the venmo the zelle is coming instant yeah. i don't think about it mm -hmm. so it's like other family members not like it's not gonna be like that you're not my mom yeah. you, didn't, yeah. you, didn't, she, you didn't you didn't raise me so yeah. you know it's just different but you know when you reach a certain level of success where you can buy anything you want mm -hmm. and you can afford the things that you want in life um, you left with money problems or you yeah. left with problems that money can't solve. Yeah. So yeah. what's the biggest challenge you're dealing with right now? 
biggest challenge I'm dealing with now is uh, overcoming emotional traumas and uh, trying to do that while scaling businesses. Yeah. Um, multiple businesses at that. I think the one of the biggest mistakes I've ever made was trying to start too many businesses at the same time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, one would be doing very good and I'm like, oh, I got the best idea, the best sauce to make the next one do good. And then boom, it does really good. Mm -hmm. But now this suffers. Yeah. So I did that too many times. You know, now I you know I have multiple streams and they're they're doing pretty good now. Um and I, but it took a lot out of me to yeah. even get it to that point. Mm -hmm. Um but emotional traumas, like I said, you know, I go through things that um mentally I just sometimes can't get over. I can't find yeah. myself to like get over it. But I've also learned how to like take time out. Yeah. So like weekends, like I don't work. You know, mm -hmm. I may I may come up with ideas and stuff like that, but you know, the good the good thing about what I do is like I own my time. So no person can tell me to clock in. Mm -hmm. Nobody can tell me to say, Hey, like you need to be here at this time. Like, no, it's optional. Like me yeah. doing podcast interviews is that's optional. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. I have the option to do those things. And one day people are gonna pay me and I'm one day I'm gonna be declining it. Yeah. So it's like <laughs> I've understood that, but you know, you gotta stay grounded in this. So. Yeah. yeah. With trauma, what has been the most impactful trauma that is it seems so hard to get over and it's almost as if you're unsure of if you ever will like it cut deep um i would say just like having a kid with the person i had a kid with and mm -hmm. hearing them tell me things that i sh that they wanted me to believe and i did believe and then they lied mm -hmm. so that was one of the hardest things to get over and i'm still not over it yet you know there's certain things that i deal with in court that she promised i would never have to deal with yeah mm -hmm. here i am so yeah. you know child support and stuff like that you know even though money is not a thing it's just the fact that i have to do it and you said right. you went against your word yeah. and for me my mom raised me on your word is your bond yeah. so you know as men that's why i always tell men stop lying bro like stop doing stuff like that because yeah. now nobody believes your word so you know you know there's a kid out there who lies about everything and then when you really got something going on nobody believes you right yeah. and then you're suffering for a long period of time until somebody just like oh this is off yeah so it's like yeah yeah um, I wanted to ask about your how you mentioned the emotional trauma too. Did you ever feel like, dang, I kind of want to just put a pause on things that I'm doing, or it feels like I'm working so much, it feels hard to work on my on the uh, internal things. It feels hard to work on the emotional things. Like, did you ever feel like I need to slow down other stuff so I can focus on the things I need to work on emotionally? Absolutely. Um, that's why I started hiring. I went on a hiring spree. <laughs> like I'm like, like I don't want to do nothing. I need all y'all to do it, and yeah. I'm willing. To, I'm willing to fork up the money to do it. And that was one of the best decisions I've, I've ever made, ever made. Is because delegation has allowed me to have my time back to sit with myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, like even my sales team. You know, I have a head of sales, and and like for me, you know, shout out to Rob Deerdeck. You know, I took mm -hmm. this um this business structure from him, mm -hmm. but like I have heads. Like I call it a ten headed dragon. And I have different heads of my business. So I have, you know, a head of marketing, a, a head of email marketing and text message marketing. I have a head of finance. I have, you know, an operations guy. I have, a, I have a head of sales. I have a head of, you know, uh, content. I have yeah. these people who focus on making sure the people under them work and do their jobs good. And, you know, although you spend a good amount of money on it, it's also I'm willing to pay that money to have my time back. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there is times like I'm addicted to hustling though. So I don't think there's like, I know some people be like, I'll retire at this age or I'll <laughs> stop doing this at this age. I don't think I'm going to be that yeah. person. At least I don't think, yeah. I, yeah. I don't know, maybe 10 years of me grinding and hustling another 10 years on top of what I'm already doing. I may feel differently, mm -hmm. but you know, for me, it's like, I love the hustle. I love the grind. Yeah. So it's like when you fall in love with the process, the money is just the byproduct of it. Mm -hmm. The hustle is what I'm addicted to. I'm yeah. addicted to waking up and going to hustle and coming up with these different ideas and trying it out. And then, Oh, boom, this made six figures in a day. Cool. Now I know this works. Now let me try to, you know, extend on this six figures to make another six figures here and now let me see if I can do it. It's a challenge to me. I love the challenge. Mm -hmm. It's just like playing video games. Yeah. I grew up playing video games. So it's like, this is all a game to me. I gamify everything. Yeah. So. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Cause I was wondering like, cause again, like again, the, especially the people that you're around, like especially that we're around, like, like everybody's making money, everybody making bread. But like, my question is, do you think income is kind of stopping? Like, do you think focusing on income is, st is stopping you from internally growing? Yes. It does. Um, because I am so invested into my businesses and I am the face of a lot of my businesses. Yeah. Um, because I am that, it forces me to mask certain things that I go through in real life. And I'm doing it because I need to make more money. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the excuse that I tell myself. Um, and that's something I have to face. You know, yeah. and it's just like, hey, you got to be honest with like, yo, you're not healthy. I went through a period of time where I had to take like two, three weeks off social media. And it was like, 
it was really bad. Like mentally, I was just yeah. I couldn't do it no more. I would hit my I had hit my peak. Yeah. I had drained myself out. I had worked as much as I could. I put all the hours in, mm -hmm. and then I took two three weeks off. I took a break from social media. I took a break from yeah. everything, and I found myself again. Mm -hmm. And then instantly, when I got back into working, the amount of hours I was working, I felt the same exact way. So yeah. I had to cut certain things loose, and I had to delegate certain things so I could be with myself a little bit more. Yeah, sure. And uh, now, you know, having a therapist, it helps. You know, I have a hardcore therapist too, though. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. he's, you know, <laughs> he, he helps people in prisons. So, yeah. you know, the perspective I have on things now is like way different than I did l last week. So, yeah. Yeah. Y'all having a different conversation with a different person right now. <laughs> we talked about it like because even the people that you're around, like you said, your net worth is like your network is your net worth. Right. So, again, there's value in the people you have around you. But even you said like you had to take you had to fast from like, our, you know, the friend group that you had again, yeah. like because there's certain people it's like, ah, like you helping me make money, but like, I just can't be around you right now. Like I got to take this time for myself. Like talk yeah. about that a little bit. Like, even though people are good for you, like they're good people, like they're genuinely good people, yeah. but you still got to fast from them so you can heal. Like talk about that. Yes. Yeah, it's, 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 it's tough. I mean, you know, I have a lot of great friends who make a lot of money and it's dope. <laughs> I, I love them to death and I want yeah. them to continue doing what they're doing. But sometimes I can't think always business i can't yeah. like i just i mentally can't do it i have to have and then two a lot of my friends aren't dads mm. so it's like i have a, a different aspect to life to think about Facts. than just money even though me thinking about money is what's gonna make sure i have an easier life of being a dad mm -hmm. it's not everything because i've realized when you have parents who always focus on money kids come second i don't ever want my daughter to ever feel like she came second to anything mm -hmm. yeah or or anyone and that's yeah. all my children all of them if you have like it doesn't matter if you have my last name or not if you are my, of my bloodline you come first over everything i'm willing to drop everything so um you know it, it's it's tough it's yeah. not it's not the easiest thing in the world to do but i also realized that um you know fasting isn't just from food and water and to show gratitude for the people who don't have anything. Mm -hmm. It's also important for you to fast from the things that you don't need to be thinking about. You know yeah. what I mean? Self doubt, mm -hmm. you know, anger, that yeah. anxiety, that should fast from those things, learn how to be okay with those things. Like mm -hmm. I said, I have more clarity than I have had in this whole year throughout these last 10 days That's because good. I'm not smoking. Cause I'm not drinking. Cause I'm not eating during the day. When mm -hmm. you stop eating every, like when you yeah. stop eating yeah. for 15 <laughs> hours out of the day, yeah. you start thinking different. So like yeah. right now, even the way, again, like I articulate myself now, it's because I'm fasting. If I have food in my system, if I have bad foods in my system, I wouldn't be able to think of the things that I'm saying right you now. You would feel different. You I would feel, feel different. like sluggish. sluggish. You just feel like slow. Like so I did a fast cause I did a, um, I don't know if you know like Wallow, but he did duck flower challenge. Yeah. I just did that recently. That thing, <laughs> I had literally had me throwing up like constantly, and I was just getting up. It was literally, I had only drunk water, but I was throwing up yellow stuff. It was mm -hmm. like literally toxins in my body. I was yep. literally getting out. Yeah, right. <laughs> gross. <laughs> Absolutely gross. But I felt light. Like, and I'm already skinny, so it's like, wait, why? <laughs> like, it's kind of weird, but like, it definitely, you feel lighter, you feel different, you feel more clear. Like, and they literally see it on the podcast right now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> I think too, like uh, life is about balance. You mm -hmm. know, you yeah. got to balance. There's, you know, shout out to Prince Donnell. We've had a couple conversations. He's a really great guy. Shout out to Prince. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, he, he, me and him had a, a talk because I was going through something mentally and I needed to talk to somebody who could not relate, but give me the right guidance. Yeah. And, um, you know, he, he told me something that was important. He said, you have to have balance in life. You know, you got to remember yeah. that there's a, a sun and there's a moon. There's a yin and there's a yang. You know, there's, you know, all of these different things. There's a heaven and a hell. But internally, there's a heaven and a hell within you. Mm. And you can't be too high off your highs and you can't get too low off your lows. You have to find that median ground. So for me, you know, when I started realizing that, you know, I started thinking things differently. And I started yeah. feeding myself better foods yeah. and stop smoking and drinking so much and, and stop letting a certain, like, there's toxic people that you can let into your life that literally can do your body in mm -hmm. ways that drinking and smoking can't. Yeah. So you got to be mindful of those things. Yeah, because yeah, like sure. even the people you be around, like the people like in the circle, I feel like like most people think that, OK, everything that like because, again, like you said, like you have to audit some of the bad stuff, but you also have to audit some of the good stuff, too. Yeah. Like because at the end of the day, like good or bad, you still have to audit it and you still have to be with this. Like like what is your thought process on this question, on this statement? Like, cause you know, in the entrepreneur space, it's always, there's, there's some people say there's no such thing as balance. You have to focus on one thing right. and there's no such thing as two. What's your thought process on this? So which one you, would you agree with more me versus me or me with me? Which would you agree mm. with more? That's a great statement. Um, hmm, that's a great question. I've never been asked that. Um, I would say both, you know, I, I don't think I could give you one particular one. 
um, because sometimes I do have to put like you have to challenge yourself. Yeah. But you also have to know when to stop challenging yourself. Mm. So it, it requires both. It requires a balance. I think sometimes when people say like you should only focus on one thing is in a business aspect mm. when you're when you're growing businesses. Entrepreneurs yeah. want to start business after business after business after business. True. Don't do that. That yeah, is how you don't. create more <laughs> issues for yourself than you could possibly think of. Focus on one that works. Grow it. Right. If I would my do-rag brand, it was doing like 25, 30 K a month. And then I went and started my clothing brand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why didn't I just focus to get it to the point where it was profiting six figures a month? Mm -hmm. It was making million dollars every other quarter. Yeah. And I outsourced everything before starting anything new. Yeah. yeah. A lesson that I learned. Now the business isn't doing as well because mm -hmm. now I put all my focus here. Yeah. But guess what? The clothing brand was doing great until I put all my focus on teaching people clothing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now guess what? I mean, we're still balancing it pretty well, but it's like it's it's suffering. Yeah. yeah, and I didn't realize that I needed to hire managers until I got to a certain level, yeah. till I to the point where I could afford it. Now I'm like, okay, well, look, now this person needs to go be the head of this business now, yeah. Yeah. and you know, I give them a fifty percent cut of whatever we make, but I want this business to last because my daughter owns fifty percent of mm -hmm. it. So yeah, that makes sense. Um, this was a really good interview. Yeah, Thank you so was. much. I appreciate it was. you guys. And I wanted to ask you one more question. Um, what do you see for the future of Tess? Like, what do you see for yourself um, in the next over the next few years? Um, me personally, I just see more selflessness. You know, I think of uh, you know being even more pure. I'm mm -hmm. finding myself even more. You know, I think I'm pretty pretty wise if I do say so myself right now. Mm -hmm. But I think even more wisdom. I think uh helping people more. You know, we're working on donating a lot more this year. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of this money, um a lot of this money, we gotta remember this blood money. You know, this is yeah. this is like evil in certain yeah. ways. So how can I give out as much as I can? Because mm -hmm. when you give more, you get more. And I believe in pouring in more people. So uh, future for me is like, you know, more more assets under my belt, you know, apartment mm -hmm. building by the end of this year, that's that's the goal. Um and just helping more people. You know, we have, I have 19 students who have made six figures. Mm -hmm. My goal is to now get them to seven figures. And then yeah. how can I get an additional hundred people to be six figure earners? Yeah. So, you know, not only that, but just being a great son, being a great dad, that stuff comes first. So that's what I would say is in the future for me, mm -hmm. you know, God willing. So. Yeah. I love it. Okay. For sure. Yes. Yes. I appreciate y'all. Nah, for sure. Oh, shout yourself out. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So y'all can check me out on the gram, uh, underscore the real Tez. You can check me out YouTube, Twitter, um, under Dantez Akram, and um, TikTok, underscore the real Tez as well. I drop free game. Um, I'm the owner of Limitless Investments. I own the number one Discord community in the world when it comes to clothing brands. We do stock investments, um, sports betting, clothing brand, e-com stuff. Um, just the whole the whole thing. It's just a community. Okay. We have 10,000 people in there. So if you want to learn, make sure you tap in, click the link in my Instagram bio. Um, come to one of my free classes. We're specializing in, in moving forward into the AI space. So if you want to learn some tools that will probably save your life in the near future, uh, definitely yeah. tap in with your boy. <laughs> and uh, other than that, just be, keep being great. You know what I mean? I appreciate y'all. Y'all doing a phenomenal phenomenal job and uh mm -hmm. just keep putting that word out there for yeah, sure you came sure. in here with the drip on so no. yeah <laughs> they got evidence of, they can get it so nah, yeah for sure appreciate but yeah thank you this is great Most uh, definitely. yeah we, we wish the best it. to you for sure thank you i appreciate you guys and y'all gonna y'all gonna succeed either way you just gotta stay consistent with y'all doing definitely for sure. definitely Absolutely. thank 100%. you we appreciate it for Absolutely. sure well check this uh what Check us out <laughs> on YouTube, y'all. <laughs> uh, make sure y'all continue to support the channel, and we will see y'all next time. Bye, y'all. See y'all. Yeah. We out. <laughs> <laughs>